This interview is with Alison McClure, the National Manager for Scotland for the Institute of Physics. We talk about the fantastic variety of jobs she has had involving physics, what sort of hobbies she gets up to, and about her scientific expeditions to some of the coldest places on Earth. Enjoy listening! You're listening to Insight, the University of St Andrews Student Physics Society's podcast. I'm your host, Samuel Avery. Join us as we journey into the lives of St Andrews academics, discovering their passions, inspirations and motivations. Today on Insight, we have the pleasure of interviewing Alison McClure, the National Manager for Scotland for the IOP. Thanks for joining us. Ah, you're welcome. No problems. Um, so could you just tell us a bit about your job and what that kind of entails? Yeah, I cover everything that the Institute covers, but in a Scottish context. So looking at industry, physics and industry, physics and careers, um, education of all sorts um, and policy work as well. So one day I could be out trying to get kids doing balloon kebabs at Highland Games or the next day I could be in the Scottish Parliament telling um, MSPs how brilliant physics is and how much it contributes to the Scottish economy. So it's a really varied job. It's brilliant fun. Fantastic. And what path led you to this job then? Oh, a long and winding one. (laughs) Yes, it took quite a while to gain all the skills that I now use in this uh, job. Um, I started off um, doing a degree in, well, it was natural philosophy then, but physics, essentially, in Aberdeen University. And after that, I was, well, I was always into the outdoors. And after that, I saw a job in the Met Office. And I thought, wow, that would be brilliant to be able to go and do that. I went down and I thought I would be a weather forecaster, but actually they don't always put people straight into that. They want you to do research. So I did three years of research on meteorological instrumentation um, and outdoory type stuff. So I was putting automatic weather stations on tops of mountains and actually out in the ocean as well. That was a fabulous job. But after that, three years, they offered me to become a weather forecaster. So I took up the offer, of course, as you do. Uh, and that was another eight years of working all over the place um, in RAF stations, uh, in weather centres and also the Antarctic. I worked there for six months. So after that, <laughs> I was beginning to get really tired of doing shifts, actually. Um, so I decided to take a day job in a yacht marina in the west coast of Scotland and worked there for a number of years doing all sorts of things, um, fixing boats and learning how to run a business. Um, And that was actually key in helping me get this job eventually. Um, Because after that, I worked for Scottish Water for a wee while and then actually went to policy work with the government in beef and sheep and actually pigs, eggs and poultry as well. Although I must point out that pigs don't have eggs, but it was pigs, (laughs) comma, eggs and poultry. (laughs) Um, So that gave me a physics background business experience and policy experience, all of which led me to get this job. And it was the absolute ideal job uh, for me and they thought I was the ideal candidate. So I was well chuffed that they uh, they chose me. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, obviously tons of experience in all these different areas really came together. And in what way did the all these jobs tie into physics? Did they all tie into physics? Well, oh, physics ties into everything, you know. Um, obviously, the meteorology was very physics-y and I needed my physics degree for that. Um, but at the yacht marina, it was really easy to pick up the business side of things because I was good at numbers. Um, I could fix boats quite well because I just needed a logical repo- um, approach to be able to fix things, you know, especially the likes of the engines and stuff. And I'd sailed in my childhood in any case, which is kind of what had got me into physics. Um, And then with the policy uh, work, again, a logical approach is really helpful. Um, And being able to get lots and lots of really quite complicated information into one sheet of paper and a fairly simple message for the minister who's having to take in lots of stuff as well. Um, so physics really gave me the skills for doing it, all of those jobs. So it's all these transferable skills that yeah, you're all about in the, the degrees yeah. now. Um, so what, what's your favourite thing about your job now then at the IOP? 
Um, my favourite thing is, I suppose, um, trying to engage youngsters. I absolutely love doing that and doing showing how easy physics is in a lot of ways and how um, really uh, it covers everything and how you can just do some nice simple experiments and it helps to explain the world and also the fact that it can lead people into fantastic careers. So if you can just get that wee spark off someone then it would give them a, a really good life chance as well as having a, an interest for life that's just absolutely amazing. I mean, what could be better about trying to, than trying to understand how the universe works? <laughs> and did you have a, a science or physics idol as you grew up that kind of ignited that spark in you? I didn't as I grew up, uh, other than my mum, who had been an engineer and became a physics teacher, so she was kind of my idol. But actually nowadays... Um, I hadn't heard of Jocelyn Bell Burnell when I was younger, but since I learnt about Jocelyn, I, you know, she really is my idol. She's an amazing person, and I've had the privilege of meeting her a few times as well. Yeah. She's recently donated um, money to try and help diversity in the physics community. So she's just my absolute hero. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. A really inspirational person, so a, a great choice. So um, to talk a bit more about the Institute of Physics, could you kind of describe to us what it is and what their aims are. Hi, the Institute is a, a group, uh, well, a membership organisation for physicists um, in a simple terms, but actually we're a charity as well. A lot of what we do is about trying to get youngsters into physics and, well, everybody really, trying to get everybody interested in a sort of a general way, but also uh, making the links so that there are lots of... Um, uh, paths that people can take that involve physics. Um, so there's all sorts of aspects to our work um, in, in engaging people, uh, pointing out careers, uh, supporting people in industry and at universities. We do a lot of work with the members as well. And members also volunteer for us to be able to do our charity work too. Um, so there are a lot of aspects to what we do. And also part of our engagement is, like I said earlier, in making sure that policymakers, you know, the likes of the politicians and government servants, know how important physics is. So it's quite easy to forget it because it underpins everything. But if you forget it, the fact that it underpins means that nothing else can happen. So we really need to make sure that the money's put in to the likes of research and STEM at school to make sure that uh, there's a good pipeline of people coming through doing physics at all levels. So it's really this kind of many varied approaches, but it has the, the physicists at the core. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And why do they feel that it's important to have this community of physicists? Um, I suppose it's a re really good to have a support network and just to show the variety of different careers that uh, physicists are in. Because um, some physicists go on to do jobs that don't actually involve physics anymore. But I think once a physicist, forever a physicist. And you want to be amongst um, people that um, think the same way and you can chat physics again. Because it's not exactly always the best chat up line at a party, for instance. <laughs> I mean, how often has a physicist gone in and talked to somebody and that's the end of the conversation straight off? So it's actually really nice being surrounded by folk who understand you know, physics jokes or <laughs> what you're talking about when you say the Large Hadron Collider, mm, So it's for having instance. these like-minded yeah. people. Uh -huh. um, and the IOP kind of has its roots in this Physical Society of London, and that was formed in 1874, which is not yesterday. <laughs> um, so do you feel kind of the relevance of the IOP has changed as the world has become more interconnected with social media and the internet? Well, I think it's even more relevant than it was then. I think it started off as more of a, a club, a kind of membership-based thing, uh, organisation, whereas now we're much more connected with the other outer, with the rest of the world. Um, and it means that physics is actually more relevant to everyday life now than it ever was. Okay, fantastic. And um, how is it relevant specifically to undergraduate physics students? Because obviously, you know, once a physicist, always a physicist. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. about those people who are currently becoming physicists? Yeah, well, I've certainly chosen a good subject and it's well paid for one. You can change the world, make a big difference in the world. And uh, challenging and interesting jobs are a weight for any physics graduates. And we support that sort of journey through um, from being an undergraduate you can become an associate member and we'll supply careers advice, put you in touch with lots of people who can help. We can 
supply grants for doing some fun stuff. You know, it's not all serious. Um, and then as you become a physicist and become a member, you know, we can provide different services for people as you go through your um, sort of physics journey in your career. So it's sort of a, a big mentor and, you know, it has all this experience which they wouldn't otherwise have access to. Yes, yeah, and networks and all sorts of things that um, that you might be able to need as you go through your journey. Fantastic. And before your job at the IOP, you have had this fantastic variety of jobs. And what was it that made you keep trying these new things? And why do you think you succeeded in so many varied fields? Um, I think it's just... Um, I suppose I always want a challenge, something interesting and different to do. Um, it's always good just to be all moving on and doing stuff that's interesting. And actually, um, this job's amazing because I've been in it for more than 10 years now. And that's pretty unusual for me because I've always wanted to move on to the next thing. But actually, within this job, I've done lots and lots of different things that have been absolutely fascinating. So the job just keeps me interested and challenged enough. Um, so I think that's why I've moved around a lot and then not moved with this job because there's always something new coming up. So it's not very stagnant. It's it's always changing. Yeah. And why do you think that the skills from physics-related degrees are so versatile? Why why do they find themselves in use everywhere? Yeah, good question. Um, I suppose it's a, a logical way of thinking, all those sort of transferable skills, and also sometimes taking it to the extreme. You're looking at the biggest things in the universe um, and the smallest things, and sometimes looking at the smallest things with the biggest um, uh, measuring instrument in the world, like you know, like the LHC, <laughs> Large Hadron Collider. It's absolutely massive to look at the tiniest particles that are around. So it's those extremes think that make physics different from other subjects plus the mathematical skills and so on that you gain from it so it's being able to analyze across the spectrum of everything mm, yes yeah. yeah and you mentioned uh, as part of your jobs you've kind of led scientific expeditions to the arctic um so could you tell us a bit more about how you got involved with those and what some of the challenges were yeah, certainly. Well, I've always been interested in the outdoors and done lots of outdoory stuff. My folks were big sailors, so we did that as kids. Um, and then when I moved down to England, sailing wasn't as easy, so I started doing a few mountains. And when I moved back up to Scotland, I really got into the mountains. And uh, Scotland's a really good training ground for almost everywhere. Um, and I ended up doing a, a postgraduate certificate in environmental education and outdoor learning, which actually tied in loads of physics-y stuff. So I was trying to translate physics into outdoor learning as well. Um, so I thought I'd better use that qualification uh, and all my outdoor experience combined and start to lead expeditions. And the first one... Um, I was chief scientist for was one to South Georgia through British Schools Exploring Society. And South Georgia's in the sub-Antarctic. Oh, it's an absolutely amazing place to go. And you can't fly there. You have to get a boat, um, which made it even more of an adventure because it was a big journey to go. Were there any specific challenges once you got there? Like the, <laughs> the isolation, I presume? You couldn't pop to the shops very easily? Uh, yeah, you certainly couldn't buy anything there, so you had to make sure that absolutely everything was the, the, there already, as in you planned to get it there, and that's part of expeditioning, is the months and months of planning that goes into it. Again, being a physicist is helpful for that, you know, attention to detail, and making sure we had, well, food for one, um, clothing, and also all our scientific experimentation had to be there um, as well. So we had all that packed up and sorted out. But I suppose that the main worry was that if somebody got injured, we were actually two weeks away from a hospital. Um, and we did have doctors on the expedition, but you just kind of hope nobody injured themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you recall any like personal knickknacks you may have um packed to take along? Any good luck charms or something? Uh, yeah, I had a little bear uh, called Monroe that I took uh, with me uh, that my partner had given me, so that came along with me because it was a long time to be away from home, mm -hmm. so it was nice to have that wee thing with me. Yeah, that is lovely. <laughs> um, are there any opportunities that you regret passing up or that you regret taking? Because obviously you've, you've taken advantage of so many different things. Um, 
No, uh, I haven't passed up anyway. I suppose one that was a little bit um, difficult to take on was I, I was asked to go onto television for a while. And I'm not really a, a front room sort of person. Uh, I can um, present and, you know, uh, be kind of extrovert, but I'm actually really an introvert, um, as many physicists are. Um, so I had to put on a real act for that, and I didn't enjoy being recognised. Um, so I was quite pleased after three months of being on the telly that actually Heather Reed, Heather the Weather, came in and, and took my place in the um, on the report in Scotland doing the television weather. Uh, she was much better at it, <laughs> <laughs> far better suited, and, and uh, was very good at being famous. Unlike me, <laughs> let you get back to what you you like to do. So, is there, is there anything that you miss about your student days, or that you miss from a previous job? Um, I really, really enjoyed being a student actually, because I got loads and loads of sailing done, and I played a lot of chess. Um, so I, I suppose I miss the sailing and the chess now because I don't really um, have the time to do it anymore. Um, especially the chess because I'd reached a, I played for Scotland, the Scottish women's team. Uh, for a while and I reached a certain level that I couldn't maintain when I was on shift so I gave it up at that point. So I suppose, I, yeah, I kind of I missed doing those things but I might go back to them when I retire. <laughs> Got that to look forward to. Yep. Um, what's something that you find satisfying or enjoyable about working with the IOP now? Any, like, small things? I think working with uh, other physicists is brilliant. I really enjoy that. I enjoy the sense of community and the helpfulness that's around there. Everybody is out um, to improve physics generally and to discover how the universe works. And I just love that sense of camaraderie and purpose. Uh, we're all on this sort of one crusade, as it were, uh, and working our way towards that. So it's lovely to be working in collaboration with people rather than in competition. Mm. Okay, so everyone's got this shared common purpose. Mm. Um, do you work to music or do you have TV on in the background when you're doing your work as well? No, I like peace and quiet. I used to love music a lot, but actually when I went to the Antarctic, I loved the silence. And ever since then, I've liked quiet. <laughs> so I, I completely changed after that. You I don't did. play some ambient, like, chilling wind noises going by or anything? <laughs> no, I get that in my house anyway, because it's an old house. <laughs> So, do you have any pets, or if you were to get a pet, which animal would it be? Yeah, I've got three dogs, two cats, and six hens. So, quite <laughs> so a, a bit of a menagerie, yeah. 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 <laughs> that keeps me busy and fit. <laughs> um, do you have any favourite hobbies now? So, you've mentioned chess and sailing, but do you do anything now that's like superseded that? Yeah, I've really got into the mountains, so any way of getting around the mountains, I just love, uh, especially skiing. And I've I'm in the mountain rescue team in Tayside, uh, so I spend a lot of time training for that to get physically fit for one, but also learning loads and loads of skills that you need to be able to get people off the hills and all the various um, scenarios that we might end up in. And actually physics, again, helps with that, um, mm -hmm. working out loads on stretchers and especially for the technical rescues and also the work around avalanches and things like that. Mm. That takes up a lot of my time, yeah. spare time these days. Because yeah. obviously the hills are a big draw for Scotland. Aye, yeah. Uh, for people yep. all over. Do you have any favourite sports that you like to watch? Mm, skiing. I like watching that. I occasionally watch football. Um, but I can't, yeah, I can't say I really enjoy watching Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any sporting match that you would really like to see played between, like, two football teams or... A particular ski slope with your favourite athlete racing? Um, yeah, I suppose I'd love to see some uh, skiing with um, Scottish women because they're really coming through now. Uh, actually, ski mountaineering um, races are happening in Scotland a lot more. So I suppose I'd love to go and actually watch one of them or maybe take part in one. <laughs> so are there any hobbies or activities that you would like to try, but you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet? Because it, it sounds as if if you want to do something, you've gone and done it. Yeah. But is there anything left? No, not really. I've, um, I suppose I've ticked a lot of my bucket list things. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really got any big desires. Um, 
so I can't think of anything that I really fancy doing that I haven't done already. So That's ski and rock climb and winter climb, it's just doing all of those more often and maybe a bit harder. <laughs> And is there anything that you're particularly proud of achieving within your life? Uh, I think climbing the mountains I've climbed. You know, I've climbed to pretty high uh, mountains just in the small groups. Um, going to the Arctic and the Antarctic I've been really proud of. And also bringing youngsters on. Um, some of the, the youngsters that were, have been on our expeditions, one of them in particular has just crossed the Antarctic uh, unsupported in a team and she was amazing, you know, and another of the boys, he has become an explorer and he's crossed the Greenland unsupported. So that's two youngsters who've gone on to some fantastic things. Plus quite a few of them went on to do physics as well. So well chuffed with that. <laughs> yeah, that's very crazy. What is it about the Arctic that when people get a taste, they, they got to go back? Um, so we're going to move on to quick fire questions. Um, mm -hmm. So you can answer these a bit quicker, but feel free to expand upon your answers. So do you have a favourite music genre and favourite song? Uh, Scottish folk, uh, and I actually it's the favourite song is uh, Grieg, so it's classical elegiac melodies. And do you have a favourite uh, book that you like to read? Uh, one that I really liked in the past was Iris Murdoch, The Golden Notebooks. But I like Scottish stuff as well. Kenneth Stephen wrote a magic book called The Ice, which is superb. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing a theme here. Uh -huh, there's a bit. <laughs> um, would you rather learn a foreign language or a programming language? And do you already know any of either? Uh, programming language, probably. I'm a bit rubbish at foreign languages. I'd like, I'd actually like to learn Gaelic. I know a little bit um, because of the hill names. But yes, the programming language, um, uh, I'm giving away my age here, but Fortran 66. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you consider any other courses at university when you were applying? Anything other than physics? I thought about engineering uh, and I thought about meteorology. Um, but I ended up doing me meteorology and from physics you can get into engineering. Um, so Just choose physics. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the obvious choice. Uh, would you rather holiday in a city or the country? I feel like I can country. guess this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your favourite type of food? Vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah. Do you have a particular dish that you love to cook or eat? I don't like to boast, but I do a mean spinach lasagna and that's fantastic. <laughs> that does sound good. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Oh, very much a morning person. Yeah, I'm rubbish at night. <laughs> On the exact opposite. <laughs> Can't stand the morning. And do you have a favourite genre of movie? Eh, uh, no, I don't really watch movies now. I like uh, nature programmes and science programmes. Very boring, really, in that way. <laughs> do you have a favourite science presenter, then? Oh, it has to be Richard. Um, David Attenborough, even. No, no, it's really. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jurassic Park, no. Um, do you have a favourite condiment? If you're having some chips or you're having a nice sandwich, or are you going to put on ketchup or mayo? Uh, my favourite... Ah, right, OK, yeah, I suppose I'm a, a bit of a Glaswegian with salt and vinegar. <laughs> salt and vinegar. It's yep. classic. Why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. Um, so finishing question, so please feel free to take your time with this one. How would you encourage others to seek out opportunities and make the most of the opportunities that they're unsure about taking? Uh, well, if it's in terms of looking for jobs, look at what you really want to do and um, find out who's doing it and go and apply for that. And if nobody's doing it, well, do it yourself. Create it yourself. Just work out what you're good at, what you like doing, and go and do it. So it's really not sticking to the beaten track? No, kinda. no, and if... If it's adverts, for instance, if they're advertising for an engineer, well, apply for it if you're a physicist because it cuts across everything in any case. Don't believe adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Go for what you really want. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Alison McClure. It's been a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. 
You've been listening to Insight, the University of St. Andrews Student Physics Society's podcast. I was your host, Samuel Avery. Thanks to all the wonderful academics of St. Andrews. Join us in the future as we learn more of the people making our education. This podcast was produced by myself and our publicity officer, Connor McBride. To find out more about the Physics Society and what we do, please find us on Facebook or Google St. Andrews Physics Society for our website. Goodbye. <laughs>